Right, back to Yokohama. James Ryan and Tyg Furlong talking to the press. I suppose I'm not all that experienced either. I've only ever played one World Cup match myself. So, um, you know, I think it's just try to stick to you know what we've worked on, you know, throughout the preseason and into the warm up games. And um, you know, you're not reinventing the wheel. You're just trying to you know do your job as best you can, really, and um, try to block out as much external noise and distraction as you can. So you just really focus on your performance. How excited are you for that? atmosphere in the stadium, the anthems, just knowing you're at a World Cup and for all the Irish fans who are going to make the prepared to the match bring up. Yeah, I suppose look there's two parts to uh, answer that question really, isn't it? And, you know, as a player, um I suppose you build up for a World Cup for so long and especially after, you know, a, a small involvement that I had in the last one, but you're still uh, I suppose looking forward to it holding on to a bit of the disappointment that you did feel after that quarter final in Cardiff. Um, the other side of that is, you know, the Irish um, support uh, we have over here. and it's, it's incredible in a way, no matter where we play, you know, home or away, summer tours down in Australia, South Africa, um, you know, uh, over in Chicago twice, you know, the amount of people that travel and, you know, I know for myself, people back home traveling, you know, it's 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 a big expense to them. You know, it's um, a lot of money on the line, a lot of time off to take with the travel and stuff. So, I, de- I definitely don't think that's lost on the players. Last question for you both: What's your earliest World Cup memory, and how does that set uh, the eye the sense of what this tournament means to people? Um, for me, uh, probably the one that came to mind quickest there uh, was the Australia Irish game in 2011. Uh, when uh, obviously Ireland had a had a big result there, um, you know, I remember Stephen Ferris picking up picking up Gany at the time, and I think kind of a seminal moment of the game. Um, so uh, I think for me that was a uh, that's kind of a big memory. I was lucky enough to be at the World Cup in 2007 as well, um, to be there, kind of experience, um, you know, just the, the amazing kind of occasion that it is. Uh, obviously, it didn't go too well that year, but um, for those two, would be would stick out for me. Yeah, I think I think 2000. What you view 2011? You said was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think 2007 for me. Um, or would have been what 15. Um, so I remember catching those games. No, you don't. You don't read really, one moment probably doesn't stick out. But you know, you remember you know that age in school and watching with your friends and stuff like that. It's kind of mad to think that Roy Best was playing this. That's the first one I can. No, distinctly remember in some ways, but um, probably just shows the longevity. Is probably a nice way to put it, out of, isn't it? So, of his career. James, how do you enjoy playing alongside Ian Henderson, and how do you complement each other in that? Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy playing alongside Henry. Um, you know, he's he's a real smart player, um, and he, I think he kind of alongside that, he, he's really physical and. Um, you know, when he's gone forward, um, you know, he's such a big man. I think everybody follows in a way. Um, obviously, in terms of the line out, I think, again, he's really intelligent there. And we kind of, kind of handy, Pete and myself, um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of hopefully share the responsibility a bit in that area. Um, and if Pete and myself, you know, see opportunities um, in the line, you know, we'll feed that back to him. Um, but, you know, as I said, I really enjoy playing alongside him as a super player. Uh, guys, question to you both. Joe was just talking about um, how something important game straight up against your one nation. How do you guys cope with that intensity and the build up? Um, yeah, I suppose the build up, the pressure, and all that, you know, at this level, we're professional athletes and, you know, we've got to be ready for that and mentally kind of prime, prime to go. Um, for us, the focus this week is, is just bringing the best version of ourselves. Um, you look at Scotland, some of the quality they have, you know, whether they go with Ben Russell or, or Hastings at 10, and you combine that with some of the threats they have in the, in the outside back area, uh, you know, Hogg, Seymour, Darcy Gray, and Maitland, you know, some of the quickest and most rapid guys in world rugby. So I think when you put those two together, um, you know, they're seriously potent side. So for us, um, you know, 
we, we just got to be absolutely bang on uh, this week and I think ready to go really from from the, from the word get-go. Time obviously you had a good, um, you know, very cool uh, programme but obviously you came good at the end. Um, do you usually feel like you're you know, ready to sort of play the straps now and get back to your best? Uh, yeah, look, I think, you know, we had the four warm-up games and um, I thought throughout we probably got better and better as it went on. And I suppose it's something, if you think about, you know, a World Cup warm where you, you go through a lot of work, you know, the SNC is tailored in such a way to, to hit your straps at a certain point, etc. And, um, you know, when you, you play a game, there's no sort of easing in, into it, is there? And it, not that we intentionally thought that going out against England, maybe, but um, you know, you probably hit you a realization where the standards at. You know, I think we bounced pretty well off the back of that, and you know, to win in Cardiff is not easy. Uh, to beat Wales at home is not easy. So, you know, I think there's definitely confidence grew within the squad as as the weeks went on, and you know, I think some of the work we've done um, throughout the preseason and and since we landed here. You know, has left us in a good place. And James, just in terms of that lineup side of things, you come to all the leadership elements that come with that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, you know, I had a bit of a taste of it again last week, uh, or you know, the, the last Wales game, and um, you know, so whoever I'm in that role, like, I enjoy it. And um, as I said, you know, certainly um, when Henry, Peter, and myself are playing. Um, it's very much um, a case of kind of sharing the responsibility and the load uh, in that regard. So, um, you know, we're, we're kind of chipping in together and, and you combine that with the with the experience best he has. Um, you know, I think when we get things right, um, you know, we can be strong in that area. Like, what have you not to do away from the Yeah, it's been good, you know. Um, you know, so we moved here uh, during the week, but... Um, up in Shiva, it was it was nice. It was a nice place to get over the jet lag. Uh, you know, the hotel was incredible. To be fair, uh, a lot of amenities in it, and a lot of recovery sort of, um, you know, areas of the pool and all that. And um, you know, the area was it was nice. Nice place to settle in. You know, we had a big shopping centre on our on our door. A few nice restaurants around. There was always uh, stuff to do and, and to pop in. I suppose away from it, you know, we had a few down days as well. Um, you know, we haven't really got up to much mad things to be honest with you. Kind of similar, just popping around, floating about, and getting a bit of grub here and there. Uh, Jay, yeah, I, I didn't head to Chinatown yesterday. Night. I took a harbour cruise in, believe it or not. Me, Roy Best, and Henderson, a very sensible of us, I must say. <laughs> uh, James went to Chinatown, didn't you? You can maybe pick up on the food. It's your yeah, special. Um, well, the food's great here. Um, I love ramen and sushi, um, but. A few of us went into Chinatown yesterday. We had a great dim sum lunch um, in a fantastic, uh, fantastic restaurant. But I'd love this the kind of uh, time we've had off the pitch. Like the people are so friendly and polite here. Um, so um, it's been great. And obviously we were in, we were in Ichiba last week and in Yokohama um, this week. So it's nice to, to get a bit of taste of, of the different places as well. Uh, Ty, Andy Carl was saying during the week that there's been an increased level of intensity and there's something brewing amongst the squad, can you describe that a little bit? What's the difference between like this week and the last couple of weeks just in terms of intensity? Um, I suppose a bit more time together, a bit more in the sort of um, rugby, rugby um, mode. Um, I think also the fact is, you know, we're here since we arrived in Japan last Thursday evening and you know, we're playing on Sunday. So, you know, you see Everything's starting to ramp up, open ceremonies. You see teams getting named. Was it yesterday, the day before, for the first game uh, tonight? So um, I think the realization to work up is here. And also, maybe a small bit of itchiness to get going. And I think lads are, you know, in a good place. Bodies are right over the jet lag. And I think everyone's just looking forward to getting out on the pitch. And I think with that, brings that bit of intensity. Uh, I love what's made before the tournament about Joe keeping and Rory Beth as captain. What does he bring to this World Cup, having played in, in three previous ones? What, what do we bring to the I probably couldn't say enough about the man. Um, I suppose he, look, he leads with his actions. He's 
incredibly good for us as a group of players. I think he represents us unbelievably well. And, um, you know, his attention in detail, how he keeps his bodies right, you know, for an age, a man of 37, he's, you see him running around in pre-season, you know, he's fit as a fiddle, honest to God. And, um, you know, I go to anywhere with him and back and I think, you know, I probably speak for the whole squad in terms of that, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. That's uh, time for a long uh, wrapping up that press conference with Seth and James Ryan there. I mean, just kind of limited in what they could. Not a huge amount of standout lines out of that, but they are kind of limited in what they can say because they've like managed to get themselves this far. We can all accept that there's an itchiness to get started yeah. for everybody yeah. so that we don't have to sit through any more press conferences. Like, like those two are, it goes without saying, so crucial to anything Ireland might achieve because nine months ago, they were bulletproof, yeah. absolutely. Like, he was still in the position of not losing a competitive game, James Ryan. They probably both had a slight dip, an understandable dip. They need to be right back. Mm. But even when you're talking about Rory Best there, like, like Ireland's line-out, are you 100% confident about it? Yeah, I know. We're going to go, you can see on your screen there, Keane Healy and Greg Feek are uh, getting themselves lined up. Putting out all to, the big uh, boys to today, to quite the, literally. Uh, to, meet the, uh, to meet the press. Um, yeah, it is a bizarre one. And like, it, what pressure is on that very first Ireland oh. line-out? And Scotland has some like unbelievable operators, obviously the second row as well, that can put massive heat in it. And you can be assuming that most are planning. Let's get over to that, uh, back to Yokohama, Keane Healy and Greg Feek. <laughs> 